gangrene causes symptoms and prevention gangrene happens when a lack of oxygen rich blood causes tissue to die in some part of the body often the hands or feet it is a serious condition that can result in amputation of a limb or death it needs urgent treatment to hold the spread of tissues tissue death as rapidly as possible diabetes is linked to gangrene diabetic neuropathy or nerve dam death can mean that a person has an injury and does not notice it diabetes also affects the small arterial vessels and they become insufficient to supply the extremity other risk factors are smoking and conditions such as Reynolds disease what is gangrene the two main forms of gangrene are known as dry and wet gangrene other types such as fourniers gangrene and internal gangrene are less common dry gangrene dry gangrene is sometimes called mummification it starts more slowly than wet gangrene and it is most commonly associated with chronic disease including diabetes the skin becomes dry shriveled and usually dark in color ranging from brown to purplish blue and feels cool or cold to touch blood vessel diseases such as atherosclerosis commonly cause dry gangrene wet gangrene in wet or moist gangrene the skin swells and blisters form and may rap rupture pus may appear it is generally associated with infection of the dead tissue wet gangrene can develop following a severe burn or frostbite this type of gangrene can occur in people with diabetes who have an injury but do not notice or attend to it due to a diabetic neuropathy wet gangrene needs immediate treatment as it can spread quickly and be fatal gas gangrene also called clostridal myonecrosis is a particularly virulent form of wet gangrene it is associated with poorly clinched wounds it sometimes result from surgery in which the blood su supply has become damaged dry forms result from a progressive loss of blood supply to tissues dry forms can become wet forms if they develop a bacterial infection causes all forms of gangrene happen because of a loss of blood supply to a certain area this deprives tissue of oxygen and nutrients causing the tissue to die dry forms can also result from vascular problems most commonly due to the poor health of arteries and veins in the legs and toes this usually develops over time to over time due to conditions such as diabetes peripheral arterial disease and high blood pressure severe burns scalds and cold heat chemical agents and extreme cold including frostbite can all lead to dry gangrene wet gangrene may develop later renaud's disease there is impaired circulation to the ends of fingers and toes especially in cold weather renaud's is implicated in some cases of gangrene diabetes imbalanced blood sugar levels can damage blood vessels and nerves reducing the oxygen supply to extremities wet forms can develop from injury deep crushing or penetrating wounds that are sustained in conditions that allow bacterial infection can lead to gangrene examples are war zones and railways machinery and street accidents if lacerated and bruised tissues are continu contaminated dry gangrene if the area is infected with bacteria embolism the sudden blockage of an artery can lead to dry gangrene but it also increases the risk of infection and therefore wet gangrene 
immune deficiency if an immune de immune system is weakened for example by hiv diabetes long time alcohol and drug abuse or recent chemotherapy or radiotherapy minor infections escalate more quickly and can become gangrene gangrenous risk factors for gangrene include smoking obesity diabetes high blood pressure and other causes of vascular disease excessive alcohol intake which can lead to nerve damage impaired immune function due for example to hiv infection chemotherapy and radiation therapy intravenous drug use symptoms the major features of wet and or dry gangrene are loss of color in the affected body part the area will become discolored and eventually turn dry and dark the color will change for, from red to black in dry gangrene or it will become swollen and foul smelling in wet gangrene gas gangrene will produce particularly foul smelling and brownish pus shiny appearance to the skin and the shading of skin with a clear line forming between affected and healthy skin pain that is later followed by loss of sensation and an inability to move the part the part will be cold to the touch and there will be a loss of pulse in the arteries internal gangrene gangrene of the internal organs is slightly different but also involves tissue death there may not be any external signs of internal gangrene but the following may occur as a result of septic shock and other complications fever and chills confusion nausea vomiting and diarrhea low blood pressure leading to light headedness and fainting shortness of breath and increased heart rate gas gangrene gas gangrene can produce all of these symptoms and others the infected area of skin can quickly extend with some changes visible within minutes in gas gangrene the skin may be very painfully swollen be pale at first but become red or bronze before finally turning blackish green show blisters filled with brown red fluid produce a foul smelling brown red or bloody fluid when the affected tissue is drained or leaks known as serosanguineous discharge create a crackling sensation or crepitus on examination due to the movement of gas under the skin this is known as subcutaneous emphysema the gas is produced by the infectious bacteria and is highly toxic causing the necrosis to spread quickly gas gangrene is very serious and immediately life threatening diagnosis a doctor will carry out a physical examination and take a medical history to find out about symptoms and potential exposure to in infection or trauma they will look for signs of shock if gangrene is suspected further diagnostic tests will be used to determine the type and extent of the necrosis and to detect detect or rule out gas gangrene test can include an x-ray or reveal gas bubble in muscle tissue mri and ct scans to determine the extent of muscle involvement test of blood tissue and any discharge may be carried out to identify any bacterial infection surgery may be necessary to explore the extent of the necrosis and to gain tissue samples surgical removal of dead tissue may also be part of the treatment prevention measures to help people who are susceptible to gangrene reduce their risk include looking daily for cuts sores redness swelling skin breaks or discharge on the feet having a medical 
food health check once a year avoiding home use chemical preparations for corns calluses and ingrown toenails preventing infection by washing wounds with mild soap and warm water being sure to clean between the toes and keeping them clean and dry watching out for signs of frostbite if exposed to prolonged cold avoiding walking outside barefoot or wearing shoes without socks making sure footwear fits well and does not rub seeking urgent medical attention if the skin beca becomes pale hard cold and numb or if any color changes occur checking for injuries if there are complications due to nerve damages in diabetes especially in the feet controlling body weight to prevent diabetes arterial disease and poor wound healing quitting smoking for those at risk regular visit to a podiatrist for foot care and treatment can reduce the risk of gangrene developing